Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Great Lakes Gaming Podcast, a podcast about video games and not about hamsters. I am sorry for the deception. My name is Dan Allen. I am your moderator today. I'm joined by Kyle Melville. Hamsters. And Nicholas Cartier. Hamstarkers. Um, it is September 2nd, 2018. Uh, it's not a sweet Sunday morning here in Michigan. You want to know why, Cartier? Why? It's Sunday night. 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 <sighs> also, just to get this out of the way at the very beginning of the podcast, I'm going to be honest with you, Cal, um, let me be fully transparent here. The people listening right now... Transparent. The people listening right now are probably listening to the audio version of this podcast. And they, they might be wondering on YouTube if they're not listening right now, like, why is this the hamster... Episode. Nobody listens to us on YouTube. It's cool. People go to various podcast places to listen to podcasts. So, I decided to make a clickbaity hamster episode. So, if you came here for the hamsters, I just want to let you know thank you. If you're listening to this audio, you have no idea what I'm talking about right now. But hamsters. This, this is the hamster clickbait episode. I'm sorry for the deception. You did get that little taste of uh, my sweet hamster named Algae. Uh, you saw him at the beginning of the podcast, and if you stick around to the end, maybe you'll see him one more time. But this is not a podcast about hamsters, Cartier, is it? No. Is and, there, unless they're in a video game. Is there any podcast about hamsters? Whoa. We could probably find our footing there. Oh, top ten on iTunes hamster podcast, because there's only three. It'll be, it'll be three at first, but that'll be okay, right? Hmm. I think it will be. I think it'll be okay. Nights. <laughs> Let's smoothly sail through Nights. corrections. <laughs> um, that's the first correction out of the way. I think we're officially switching to nights, guys. Um, this Sunday morning podcast, you're still going to get it at the same time, Sunday night, um, with the backup always being Monday morning if these things go wrong. But I think we're officially going to go Sunday nights, guys. The nighttime podcast mood. That we're setting. It'll be a it'll be a lack of coffee, but like I know I'll be able to drink a beer. I was about to, <laughs> I was, it'll be late at night. I was about to say nice. I have a Red Bull right now, not a coffee. That's just the nighttime kind of thing, I guess. Last week on the podcast, I had mentioned during corrections that I did not see Incredibles two simply because of Mama Incredibles thick hips afum. And Roger Riot said, Dan, that really makes me want to go back and listen to the last podcast. But the correction being that it was not enough to make him go back and listen to the previous podcast. So that was a uh, bummer. We could switch the we could switch the image of her thick old hips, mm-hmm. and then he might be able to click on it. Oh my god, that's he, the clickbait for next week. Yeah, that's what he's staring at. I was told there's only one way to get views on YouTube. Thick hips. And that's thick hips. And if you can combine it with the fourth best thing on YouTube, which is hamsters, which I'm trying to do, we can get some thick-hipped hamsters <laughs> to just <laughs> it's, roll around. It's my knowledge that all hamsters are thick <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's a sweet little egg. So I think what I can roll you got is you gotta upgrade to get a guinea pig. I'm I thought about guinea pigs. They have fat butts. I would, yeah, I you, know gotta if get, you gotta get two of them. I don't know if I'd love them or if every now and then I'd just be not ready for how big they were and I'd get scared. Because <laughs> they're, they're like the in-between. They're, they're like in rodent. between a hamster and a rabbit. Next week in Corrections, <laughs> this yeah. actually is the Hamster Podcast. <laughs> da, 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 da. Two big announcements. Normally this podcast is about... Uh, oh yeah, we're not doing that yet. Video but game news allegedly? Normally it's about video games allegedly. Uh, which it still is this week. Which brings me to everyone's favorite part of the tree, the twig. This week in gaming, the longest running episodic segment in Great Lakes Gaming history. This week in gaming, we talk about what we played this week. In gaming. In gaming. <clears throat> My line. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Melville, a friend of mine, a lover of rabbits. I love rabbits. What did you play this weekend, uh, you know? 
I like turtles. You're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's the new thing. Like, remember when, like, parents in, like, old 90s movies say something embarrasses their kids? Like, you're so old. Like, the things that used to date people for our generation to be like, that meme's from 2008, Dad. <laughs> Did you really just say, come at me, bro? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's your boy. It's your boy. <laughs> um, honestly, I played a lot of GTA this week. GTA um, 2? San Andreas. San Oh, 5. It's 5 San Andreas. <laughs> nope. Uh, I seriously am like that with some series, though. So it's alright to make that joke. <laughs> GTA 5, yeah. I played yes. a little with you. Um, yeah, you did. You mixing online and doing some story, right? Yeah, just doing a little bit of both. The story, I never played it the first time, really. One of my buddies played it, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> On your version, yeah. They yeah. Play, yeah. Good times. So I saw a little bit of the story, but I really got to do it for myself. And it's fucking dope. Shout out to our friend Artem, though. I'm glad they say Artem's yeah. name on this podcast. He played it the first time. I remember you got it again yeah. uh, when it came out first person for the four. Yeah. Did he play that story one, too? Because I also remember him playing a lot. I think so. <laughs> Artem's very good at Trials. Shout out to Artem. Yeah. Yeah. Artem's fire. Trials games. He's better than me. That's for sure. Uh, anything good online these days? Are you just uh, hunting for money? some random shit online. Like, they just opened up the nightclubs. Okay. So, you can own a nightclub, and then you can smuggle drugs out of it, too. You can smuggle yeah. drugs out? Okay, nice. Yeah. Could but you it's run just a... so expensive to buy those fucking things. Could you run a strip club and not do that? Or it's automatically your... Run if you're going to run a business out of anything you buy online, mm-hmm. you've got to make recurring money. Like, I have a bunker, and I have, like, products, uh, I have products that I, like, develop and stuff like that. Okay. So I've got people working on shit, and then they sell it, and then I get money. So there's no Not way, boom. there's no way to run a straight on the up and up strip club that has nothing to do with drugs? No. Nope. Because we could just be making regular strip club money. No. No, I guess not. They need to sell some guns and drugs, too. <laughs> Just like in real life. For real, though. Guns and drugs. Guns and drugs and guns and drugs and guns and drugs. Guns and drugs go good with boobies. <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. That's how I keep describing, uh... <laughs> that's how I keep describing, like... They're like, there was a Red Dead trailer? And I'm like, anyone in life is like, there was a Red Dead trailer? I'm like, not really. There's like the explanation thing, just like they did with GTA V before they just gave you the trailers with the tits. Like, yeah! <laughs> but I keep, like, at least six times in the last two weeks I've said, with the tits, yeah! <laughs> Trying to describe the GTA V actual trailers. Oh, man. Good times. Grand Theft Auto. Part of me, I was thinking about this this week, Kyle, but part of me is like, probably thinking... Probably, part of me thinks that Rockstar is thinking, wow, I kind of wish we didn't have to, like, put out anything else for a second, and we could just, like, roll in this fact that GTA V is still selling amazing. Yeah. I, the NPDs are out, but I didn't, um, it's not, we're not doing this podcast. It's still just, like, it's number two. Milking. It's number two this they're month. Milking online, dude. That's what it is. They're milking out online. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's what the money. it is. It's, uh, so I can't wait for six because it can only get better, and five is pretty fucking dope. It's the pay to win that no one really gives a fuck about. You don't hear anyone talk back about the fucking rock star pay to win, and it's completely what it is, man. Oh, yeah. Like you just hopped, and you you are in it. You are in this situation. You could do this. You just hopped in last two months. You bought it again. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, it's like, man, I really want that car. Do you have real fucking money in real life? Yeah. It's yours. <laughs> like, I know a lot of people just don't want to do that, but a lot of it's people GTA. are fine with it. Yeah, like yeah. It's fucking... It's kind of like that. It doesn't even matter. Maybe it's if you... like one of those status-type games. So, uh, yeah, like, wow, if you're walking I'm around in a fancy... I'm fucking... Like, I don't give a fuck. If you're walking ra- around in, like, wow, with a really fancy mount that, like, everyone knows, like, oh, man. Like, it was really hard to get you can, that. You can only get that. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. th- that's one thing, but in GTA, everyone's, like, a piece of fucking shit. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> everyone's much. running guns out of pretty their strip club, you know? So it's just like, did that guy work for... It doesn't fucking matter. I hate that guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Man. The, the high-end car is very enjoyable in GTA V. Yeah. It's so... That's how off-the-wall 
you should have gone Saints Row. <laughs> Just as ridiculous as the cars fully upgraded <laughs> yeah. on online got. It's pretty crazy. Kyle, you should tell the story about when you were riding the bike and that one guy on the Oh my god, yeah, when I was riding the bike. I was right. <laughs> this guy kept shooting me. <laughs> so I fucking. I killed him like twice. I witnessed this. And when he got my bicycle. And then I, I flew really. I started. I started riding really far away, mm-hmm. and then he started chasing me. But then I enabled passive mode, so he couldn't fucking kill me. You didn't enable passive passive mode until you got to Til the I got skate to park. Like the skate park. So I'm wearing. So I the to whole go. the whole way when he could have killed you, he had that option. Yeah. Just didn't pull it off in time. And then he had drove by, you went into passive mode, yeah. you're like, this is probably going to piss him off. He started doing <laughs> tricks. <laughs> yeah, I started doing tricks in the, in the skate park. He got so angry, he and went he from a car to a, he got a motorcycle somehow, and yeah. he was doing, going around, and then, I'm sure he found another guy to fucking grief. Yeah. <laughs> but I told Dan, all I wanted to do was ride my bicycle for a minute, and this motherfucker's just trying to kill me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay. Bitch. I can tell you, <laughs> you can watch me. <laughs> the the GTA the GTA Online uh, like psychology is so fucking interesting too, and because you knew he was gonna be pissed off because what you did to him is you hit him with the two for one. Yeah. Where he killed you first, you killed him back. He came back. You went up two one I on killed him. Killed him again. Yeah. <laughs> Biked away. Went to passive mode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're up, forever up two one. Like, like, I, after again. he was like, okay, I probably deserved that. I killed him again. He goes, oh, all right, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> How people react in GTA, because because that's mostly what it's like. That's why when I was playing it, this was PS3 at this time. When I was playing five online, it's like. Like, that is most of the time what happens, and it just, like, it gets worse, and other people get involved, but every now and then, you'll even out to one and one, or two and two, and they'll land a helicopter next to you. Yeah. And you're like, you are 40 levels higher than me, and they're like, have you seen the ghost? Yeah. <laughs> like, sometimes people, like, it can be really nice. Yeah. GTA is a very weird fan weird base. Game, yeah. uh, I would say the majority of people say, aren't like that. The majority either. of people... Just fucking drop a bomb on your ass. Yeah, yeah. Or somehow British in 10. I did win that <laughs> game, remember? The parachute game? You did? I didn't even know they were doing yeah, to, little global uh, challenges. So there's just like global challenges mm-hmm. that randomly happen, which I really like. I don't like the killing ones, I guess. Because I don't have any of that fucking fancy shit. Mm-hmm. I don't have jets or nothing like that, you know? Jets. But um, it was open your parachute the closest to the ground, like see the good... Open their parachute the latest, and I got 40 feet. That's fucked mm-hmm. up. First try. If you think about that, yeah, first try. If you think about <laughs> that in real life, like 40 feet to fully open your parachute before you the ground, that's fucked up. Your second try was very similar, I would say. Just you opened it just a little bit later, and it wasn't even successful. I'm kind of yeah. wonder if the physics of GTA. I think 40 feet. For next week. I wonder if like, you were 40.4 feet. I wonder if like 39.9, you wouldn't have had enough time. I feel like that the wind was doesn't it. catch. I feel like I got it like at the time. Just yeah. saying, when I was like. 39 or 38 when you let out, like, blood came out of your ass. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Yeah. Oh, man. That was legit. Terrible. <laughs> blood out yes. of the ass. Oh, GTA 5. Nicholas Cartier. Thinking about that blood out of the orifice. Makes me think, what, did you, what did you play this week in gaming? Well, first of all, Dan, I would like you to say this time... Who is This Week in Gaming brought to you by? This Week in Gaming is brought to you by Litmit Media, Litmit Media LLC, and of course our friends at the Devon Corporation. Devon Corporation. A reference to a video game. <laughs> what is that from? Pokemon. Yeah, got it. <laughs> I really didn't know. I'm like, Devon Corporation. Next, next week it'll be Sylph, don't worry. <laughs> um, I really kind of thought Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm glad it was Pokemon. I was close. The Kaiba Corp. I made the reference. I take the credit. <laughs> Pokemon, number one fan, Dan uh, Allen. I just want to say, I was at the car show yesterday, and I asked this kid, it was really like anime-ish type kid, like he had anime stickers all over his car, had Forza set up in the back of his trunk. You That's sweet. You definitely are, you deserve the title of, like an anime kid, if you have anime stickers on your car. Yeah. <laughs> you win. And I asked him, I said, I said, hey, I do like a uh, video game podcast every week, if you're just like really down in for video games. He goes... 
Oh yeah, well I do a role playing thing every week, and I was like, "This isn't a competition, bro. I was just trying to let you know." It's like, follow for follow, bro. Right now, bro. You know like, what kind of role play, bro? Is it any tabletop? The level seventy three <laughs> mage, all right. But that was just like I didn't know what to say after that. I just kind of walked away. Shout out to the Critical Role podcast, a <laughs> podcast about D anD D that's way more popular than us and doesn't. Okay, no. They need to shout us out. Fuck you. Dear Critical Role, I know you guys are busy voice acting for video games and anime. <laughs> no, that's, that's interesting. He called you. He called you out. Yeah. He's like, listen, we all have shit that no one watches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the hamster shit. clickbait episode. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Wait, but what were we doing? <laughs> What'd you play this week? <laughs> this week in gaming. Um, so I actually, I actually beat the first game I've beaten for the Switch. I beat Xenoverse. Bam. Yeah. Count it. I've been waiting for this day. Yeah. I don't have music ready. It's been. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing queued up. So good. 40 odd podcasts finally beat a game. Um, <laughs> that was so good. That's all I got, Dan. What did, what did you play this week? <laughs> well, you know that this is also brought to you by Noctis just caught a fish on that TV. Nice. Uh, one thing you guys might not know is the last 10 podcasts or so, ever since the last gauntlet, when Trey won the gauntlet, he said, Never at my house again. <laughs> so we do it at my house. Uh, and I can tell you that this week. Is, I've been waiting for this moment to happen. We're doing it at the night, in the nights now, so my sweet girlfriend Olivia is playing Final Fantasy XV as we speak, and she's fishing, and Noctis caught a fish. So this week in gaming, Noctis, probably top 20 fisherman of all time. I don't know, man. Prove me wrong. He's does he, got, does he rank that. higher than your little devil? And uh, He's got more games where he fishes. Far Cry 5, man. He's got two. Five. I've been playing. We're almost to me. We are to me. <laughs> what did I play this week in gaming? Let me tell you a few things, Kyle. Do you want me to start with Far Cry Five? I got three things I want to talk about. One of them's short. Far Cry Five is the beefiest one. Beefy. Things I also played: GTA Five, and I played some Cuphead. Good fun, but not much to say on those things that we didn't already say about GTA Five. <laughs> Far Cry Five. One of the best selling games of the year. Yeah. I'm not a first person shooter guy. We can admit this. Not just that. First person cameras, we can say, are not my forte. Yeah. Which, and there are some weird, like, artsy, like, Dan probably fucking likes this fucking game. And you're right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where you walk around and maybe you do, don't do so much besides that. Uh, yeah, like Tokyo, I still am bad. Tokyo Jungle. First person. <laughs> <laughs> Tokyo Jungle is a survival game. Dude. Oh, man. That's like. Whoa, don't get into Tokyo Jungle right now. <laughs> you have to breed you have to breed and like you have to breed with someone with good genes. <laughs> There's pollution in the city. I don't know how far you got into Tokyo Jungle, but like I got like three generations deep, dude. I've never played it and you're starting to sound like Anthony right now. It's about like being like <laughs> I will say I want a girl with really European genes. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: more Neanderthal. The one brilliant thing about Tokyo Jungle, we're not talking about it, is but you play as like a single pug or whatever. Uh, when you have kids, when you mate, that's the end of you playing as that pug. You are then however many puppies you have, which also depends on the, their genes. <laughs> that's like how many lives you have for the next run. Like if it's four pugs are born, you control all four of those, and they're all kind of running as a pack. When one of them dies, you just the, a new one is the leader, and you're controlling that. And eventually, when there's only one left, that's the one that's going to grow old, and you become. And then you, that's a super interesting system. That, uh, I've never seen any other survival game give me. That's not what we're talking about, though. Far Cry Five. I'm not a first-person shooter guy. It's going surprisingly well, Kyle. It's I was. Easy. It's easy to use. It's a very user-friendly video game. I was afraid that I would, and I was very open to. I don't really want to go out of my way and play something on easy just for the story. At that point, I'm like, I don't deserve the story. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily true, but I definitely started Far Cry 5 thinking, if I if it's crazy, I gotta go down to easy. Yeah. And you gotta realize, not just because I'm not used to first-person shooters, not because I don't love first-person shooters, which is kind of true, but like, the last one I also played was Wolfenstein on hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's the last thing I touched that was first-person shooting, 
And that's, uh, that's put crazy. me in my place. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, put yeah, me in my place. Um, but no, I've been playing on normal, and it's fine. I'm going to play this whole thing on normal is what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been easy, but there hasn't been a whole lot of moments where I think whatever the natural sensitivity is uh, in this game is clearly set for, for me. Because when you see people alter sensitivity, it's something I never did because I didn't know what my sweet spot was for a first-person shooter. Uh, so I basically went off whatever they started giving me. And sometimes I'd be turn around too chaotic, uh, get lost, all that bullshit. But it's really not been like that, man. It's been a lot of creeping through the fucking woods, guerrilla warfare, uh, coming on these outposts, killing these yeah. people. I've been running with Boomer. Who did you mostly, who was, who'd you get the most companionship out of in Far Cry 5, Kyle? I don't know. I always picked up random people. Did you go, oh, so you went soldiers mostly then? Yeah. I did like that too. But, um... D'Angelo told me he loved peaches. Yeah, but the Cougar, guy in the plane... Yeah, I just got him. He's I've only unlocked two, and he's the second one I unlocked. The guy in the plane is who I use the most, Nick. kind of. Oh, his name is Nick. But then, uh, the reason why I like the soldiers is because they revive you faster than, A, the animals. Uh-huh. And yep. two, the guy in the plane can't fucking revive you at all. That's the kind of... I kind of don't love the plane thing. <laughs> I like the plane thing, because you can direct... Where you want him to shoot. To bomb, yeah, it is nice to, from a distance. So that's why I kind of use him tactically the most. But there's this girl you can pick up later, this black girl is a sniper. Yeah. I used her Come the up most, here. too. Come over here. So comfy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this black girl is a sniper. Yeah, she's pretty far. Nice. Is her name Jess? I don't remember. I honestly just used her because she was a sniper. Nice. Oh, no, you just picked up that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you, the, this might just be because of how I wanted to play, but the first perk I unlocked was give me a third weapon. Like, I couldn't handle just having a pistol yeah. and one thing, especially because I knew I wanted a sniper. I'm yeah. like, clearly a sniper would help here, but I'm like, do I just want to have a pistol and a sniper? Because I don't love... And you could change the pistol to be like something automatic or something automatic, but... I should have. I, I invested in a 44 Magnum, and then it wasn't as effective as I thought, and I'm like, I will just never use this. <laughs> uh, but when I got the third slot, I messed around with a few different things. Obviously, like, automatic rifles are nice, but once I found that shotgun, oh my god. This is the the base shotgun. This is, like, the cheapest shotgun. And I'm, like, loving it, Kyle. Uh, just because I really do... You've seen me play Call of Duty poorly, so you know I just want to run into a situation and knife a motherfucker. Which you can still do. The stealth kills are so amazing in this, but it's really nice to just run up on motherfuckers and just have the shotgun ready. Yeah. How fast it fires when you have to interrupt your reload is t too user-friendly. Like, too fast a shot. Like, saving my life. I've still died, you know, but... It's fun. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't really, you don't I lose die. much. No. I don't guarantee you. I've fished very little, dude. Fishing is fun. That's fun. I didn't go to that... I get really that. high and get time. I get... Get lost fishing. I did. I didn't go fishing for the first like eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't find the pole. You have to go uh, east to get the pole, and I like went right into John's territory, yeah. like the bottom third of the. I map. honestly have to replay that game because did you, fi you didn't finish it, right? No, I was in the middle of it, and then the car started playing it. No, you really. And so it was the story of your life, not necessarily with Nicar, but, but just, just like, like in general, somebody starts playing my story mode, which like I don't care. On yeah, some you're teams. too open about it, dude. I've I've seen it happen. So like, and I'm just like, oh, I guess I'll just fucking restart it. Yeah, man. Sometimes I'm like, Kyle, you sure you want to let me play this when it's a cutscene and you're walking away? <laughs> like, there's like, some games I don't really care about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And some games I'm like. You fucking touch that controller. Right. <laughs> like God I mean? of War. God of War, don't fucking touch You're it. You're like, this story is for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Far Cry 5, overall very good. I'm getting a lot of... You know, I'm, just, I'm loving it. And like, Wolfenstein, uh -huh. I already got most of the story, so like... Uh -huh. Yeah. Probably doesn't... Need to finish it. I'm gonna finish it, because there's DLC now. Oh, um, okay. Good reason. Good reason. Yeah. But you would gladly welcome someone to shoot some fucking Nazis on yeah. your behalf? Yeah, go ahead, but you're not going to do it. That's super, <laughs> yeah. fucking, super fucking hard. I, I tried. I'm playing it on super fucking hard, which yeah. is why like, I only go to that game when I'm like, I need to release some anger right I re now. I really need to be put in my place right now. Yeah. yeah. It's rough. 
Um, I played two other things of note. Don't know if I want to play Transference. Oh, nice. Transference? Yeah, the demo. Yeah, I downloaded, I creepily downloaded the demo. That's fucking weird. Because he has PSVR, and we walked out of the room the other day. Uh, I'm like, I'm going to download this fucking Transference demo. I never told him about it. I so. saw it fucking today, and I was like, what oh, God. <laughs> what is this? I thought it was like a Jumanji type thing. <laughs> and I put on the VR, my body's going to go limp and fall on the ground. I'm just going like, to be in this fucking Tron, Tron world. Until the dice read five or eight. <laughs> Join us, Kyle. Join us, Kyle. Join us, Kyle. You want to play with us? Knights. I'll never forget when Robin Williams has to... Has to be like, what's wrong? And then the boy whispers in his ear, and then he has to rip his pants so that monkey tail can come out the back of his pants. Yeah. What a weird part of Jumanji. Yeah. <laughs> out of context. Oh, Robin Williams, rest in peace. Dude, when I was a kid, Wizard of Oz was not a lame movie. When I was a kid, Wizard of Oz was like, oh, with those fucking freakish flying monkeys? <laughs> I'm like, what is, of all like the. When you're a little kid and you're so, seeing movies from like the like the fifties and just like really old movies, and you're like these are all trash. Like these are all lame. Like I don't care about streetcar named Desire or whatever. Uh, I never thought that Wizard of Oz. I'm like Wizard of Oz, is a fucking journey. Uh, rest in peace, Michael Jackson. <laughs> the Wiz. What, what did I? Uh, Shen, oh, I finished Shenmue. Shenmue's magical. Maybe I'll. I don't. I already talked a bunch and I got something else to talk about. Maybe I won't talk about Shenmue until I finish 2. I was going to wait to start 2 and then I totally started 2 because it was... 1 was so good. I think I give it a 9 overall. Nice. Uh, the first Shenmue. Very, very well done. Uh, there's a 70 man battle at the end. Towards the end. That's pretty fucking ridiculous. One thing I could say about Shenmue's battle system this is all I'll say. I think I was trying to go through things like it really was like a brawler like a 3D brawler like I just played Yakuza I'm trying to throw like these kick combos and these punch oh, combos dude I want Yakuza 6 yeah I, I really want to play Kiwami the first Kiwami the second Kiwami just came out yeah mm-hmm. Okami just came out for the Switch Okami mm-hmm. oh Okami HD <laughs> oh tempted to play Okami Okay. I never got to play it, and it looks aesthetically pleasing, so maybe. Oh, it's supposed to be really My good. biggest thing on it is, like, I have to download it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. There's no physical for... I don't think so. <sighs> Rough. Or I haven't seen one yet. Yeah. What are you about to say, Kyle? I don't know. Cool. Uh, <laughs> I was trying to do, like, the, I was trying to do the punch and kick combos like Yakuza, but... Really, with everything being so few and far in between, and just like how you see things go down in like the quick time events, realistically, even though it says brawling elements, I think that the 70 man battle teaches you that, like, listen, you have some inputs where it's like uh, three button input, inputs, like three buttons at once. I gotta say that I'm used to like Mortal Kombat things, like, that's my fighting game of a child. Like, I'm talking like up down square, like. Down, forward, square. Things like that. Whereas Shenmue's punches and kicks are more like Virtua Fighter. So instead of it being like uh, back, forward, square, it'd be like back and then forward and square at the same time. It's weird. Uh, so you have these like combos where you even one hit someone with like this like Hadouken type move or like a single weird strike. Spinning back fist is one of them and it's one shotting a lot of the lower level guys. But it would be like. Square X and, and forward at the same time. It's just like and, like timing of it, getting the timing right. I think the seventy man battle taught me that that's how they want you to play Shenmue. It's not about like crazy punch combos, crazy kick combos, evade can- like every other fighting like a Shenmue today without the ba- without any of this being made before. That's kind of what it'd probably be like, like Assassin's Creed with the the, the, the Arkham Knight fucking shit. Uh, Oh god, if they made another game with the Arkham Knight fighting style. Oh, Spider Man's coming out. Wait, wait, real soon. Just last part of it. Uh, sorry. They don't want you doing that. Like, that's why that failed against 70 guys. Yeah. They're giving you moves throughout the whole game. It's like, this is good when you're fighting a lot of people. And I'm like, well, that's cool, but you never put me against more than like three people. But then you give me that weird kick that's like hitting six at once and I'm fighting 70 people at once. 
Now it makes sense. Now I understand that when three people run up, I'm supposed to do one move, one shot him, he's out of the way, do another move, one shot the other guy, your partner gets the third guy, moving on. It's yeah. not as overwhelming, because these people are existing. If you're doing it perfectly, the thing about that is, like, those moves, they take a second to reset, so if someone's running at you and you're like, here's my one shot move right in front of you, and you weren't here yet, reset, that's, that's like, the difficulty too, because then they get, like, free shots on you. But if you're, like, hitting it perfectly, you're just like... Until you get to, like, the... There's mini-bosses throughout the 70-man battle. I would say there's a group of two, and then there's one guy, and then there's a big guy. So it's, like, three different sets of, like, mini-bosses. Uh, it's all... It's all delightful. I don't know. And the last thing, and this is the shortest thing to talk about, is I was in a thrift shop. Thrift. In a, in a town. And when they sell old games, usually it's, like, 2K1... It's like Madden 2004, you know what I mean? It's like shit like that. I found Ace Combat 5 for the PlayStation 2. Ace Combat 5, Ace Combat being... Is that the fighter jet game? The fighter jet game, yeah, man, which I've always been put off by, right? So, to bring this to Gamescom, Gamescom, there's an Ace Combat 7 trailer, and what was astounding to me was how much story there seemed to be in Ace Combat. I guess I always put it off as something that I don't play, but not something I'm like... So you didn't realize it was like Top Gun. I didn't realize it's like anime Top Gun. Because this Ace Combat 7 thing and comes out and people are like, oh, definite Metal Gear vibes. And I see what they're talking about, I guess, a little bit, but as a not a Metal Gear guy, to me it's more like, is Ace Combat's a fucking anime? <laughs> <laughs> to figure out what's doing it. <laughs> uh, it but I, I end up liking it. Like, for seriously, it's also one of those things that's kind of like first person obviously. Uh... You don't see the jet as you do it. On the replay, you can see everything that happened from whatever angle right. you want. But, like, the dog fighting, it's an actual first person. I was better at it than I thought. I did, like, I did not skip that tutorial, my friend. <laughs> I fucking, I was hard in on that tutorial. Uh, I'll tell you the most interesting part. I'm playing this, it's like 3 a.m., right, Cartier? And I'm letting the, before you press start, you know, whatever, the opening little thing play, uh... And it's, like, super dramatic, like, story. And I'm like, this is why I didn't press start. Like, I need to see what Ace Combat 5's about. And, like, a part of me is, like, there's so much story in Ace Combat? Like, about what? But, no, it's, like, very obvious what about. About, like, this is war, and, like, people are dying. Like, it's not hard to get heavy with fucking fighter pilots. Like, it's really easy, because people are, like, dying all the time. And they're your friends, and shit like that. And what was funny is, Ace Combat 5 is from 2004, and... At the end of like this, this movie trailer, <laughs> this two-minute movie trailer where it's just like cutting between, like looking at like angsty like anime-inspired women being like, it's like, so you keep you keep flying like that, you're gonna die. He's like, I won't die. <laughs> like shit like that, mixed with all these planes flying fast and explosions. I didn't expect for a smash hit from 2004 to come in. Whatever song is like. Can you take it all away? Can you take it all away? Something in my face. Yeah. I don't know what song that is, but I watched it. I watched it a second time just to see that again. I was like, that was unexpected. Uh, they really thought they were hitting the peak of the climax of American. intensity. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna play Ace Combat the Seven. American uh, audience. I think that I did have a good amount of fun. It was worth the, the $2 for it, without a doubt. Um, it's just kind of nice to have, too. I'm collecting this. As things become more digital, I'm weirdly like going places and collecting this weird backlog of PS2 games that is going to serve me probably not that much of a purpose. But I guess once MTV buys IG, IGN buys us, we'll be able to put that in the behind a locked door, you know. And then that'll be our game library. And like, we have Ace Combat 5? I'll be like, yes, we do! Ah, this week in gaming. You know what we should do? What should we do, Kyle? We should see if we can be the gaming channel for Viceland. I'm sure Viceland has a I don't think they really do. gaming thing. Well, this is an open letter to Viceland, then. Oh, dear, dear Viceland. Shane, dear Shane. <laughs> it's the Vice guy, right? Is it? Is it I don't remember. Uh, dear Shane. I hear you like podcasts. I don't know. Video games. Please. TV your, your friends at Living Media. Uh, contact Jenny. Contact Jenny. Oh, man. Portray. So, 
This week we got a, a different podcast. We usually cover news, Kyle, you know what I mean? But now we're just pooping in the mic. You're so far away from the mic, Kyle, that it's not picking up your quiet-ass shit. I don't know. I don't know about the sentence before that. Tiny little wavelengths. Small dick energy right there. That didn't even exist. Small dick. That didn't even exist. It didn't exist. This week, weird things happen, Kyle. Uh, You'll note that Olivia has chosen a white chocobo, which is unusual. What is a chocobo? Chocobo is like a big old chicken that you can ride. It's Final Fantasy has a few things that carry over. Sorry, we're distracted by our television right now. Final Fantasy has a few things that carry over. They're all very separate worlds, but things that always exist, chocobo. Uh, along with some of the fiends that you exist, chocobos are usually like people. Mounts. F- yeah, they're mar- mounts. They're kind of like horses. You know, you'll find them on a farm. Horse you know bird. I mean? It's exactly what it is. You hatch them in some of the Final Fantasy MMOs. You have to like you know raise them. Characters have them inside of their hair. Oh my God, Saz has it in his fro in Final Fantasy Thirteen. I'm such a fan, but I've never seen a chocobo that was white. I still haven't played Fifteen, uh, but I haven't seen it until Olivia was playing it. And she's like, "Yeah, you had two options. I picked the white one." I'm like, "That's sick. You're the leader, Noctis." This week we had some weird things happen. It's twenty something years after. Streets of Rage 3 for Sega Genesis. Streets of Rage 4 was announced. Yeah. Uh, to add into this, Windjammers 2. Windjammers. After Windjammers remade 20 years after its original game, that game from the 90s will now get a sequel on Switch in Windjammers 2. Uh, Windjammers was a restaurant on the cruise I went to. Really? <laughs> Video games. Windjammers is like you throwing. You throw in frisbees. <laughs> and people are like, Oh, yeah! <sighs> Oni Musha Warlords is getting remastered. All these things announced, which hopefully opens the door for new Oni Mushas, Cartier. Roger Riat says that I've personally willed Streets of Rage 4 into existence by talking about Streets of Rage in the last few months. I don't think that's true. I think there's just time. For, just time for Streets of Rage 4. Today on this podcast... We're going to keep it casual. I know, you're surprised. More casual? Yes. What I want to talk about is things we want. Sometimes we talk about these games that we want to see remastered or like have a new game in the series brought to this generation. But we, we don't always have time to like dive deep on like what if you, if you wanted that, how would you want it? And I think things like Hopes and Dreams, I think they age well. If we sit here and predict what we think is going to be at Gamescom, as soon as Gamescom happens, like you're right or you're wrong. That podcast isn't the best to go back and listen to. But when I think about the hamster clickbait episode, and I think about Dreams, I think that you could have said you wanted Shenmue 3 12 years ago, and, like, said it every year. <laughs> it, is, it was never something people, like, stopped wanting. I just think that we can start here. We didn't have to start here, but I think that we, a lot of times we bring up Skate 4. And it's it's easy to be like oh, I just want to skate for. It is easy, <laughs> so easy. But as three people sit at this table who have played the skate games, don't talk about it. What, skate for what? Not even what would you want to skate for? What you want skate for over any other thing? You don't want something new, something fresh. I I know you do want to give the new project. I do. I really want Skate Four, Sessions. but I'll, t- I'll tell you another thing that I would really enjoy if they remade. Yeah, let's go with it. Midnight Club, L.A. Dub edition, Cartier. Dub edition. The, Midnight Club. The London, France edition. Yeah. Interesting. So going back, like that's yeah, Rockstar, right? Midnight yeah. Club. That's interesting. Do you you want to see a specific one remastered? Do you want to see that continue? No, I just want it continued. Like, somebody needs to, you know, there for a while there, there was only, like, a couple, of like, racing games or car games that were huge. Mm-hmm. You know, the, you got Gran Turismo, mm-hmm. you got Forza, you got Need for Speed, and you had Midnight Club. Mm-hmm. That's arcade or style driving, right? Yeah. Less realistic. You know, and then you got other ones like Dirt, which started coming out, mm-hmm. and, um... The crew. The crew. 
Some of which are flares from those things like Trailblazers, which yeah. did, did not do as well. But, you know, Midnight Onrush. Club was, like, really up there. Mm-hmm. Which is why I think it needs to be redone, especially now. And it seems like a lot of arcade-style racings, racing games, like Onrush, maybe these things aren't hitting... Which is funny when something like The Crew 2 is hitting, you know? And it's, yeah. maybe it's the open-world thing that's drawn people in. But, but if Rockstar came out and was like... Midnight Club, not only established brand in Rockstar and established series in Midnight Club, I do think a new Midnight Club sells well. Uh, I think it sells well than doing something like a Bully 2. Yeah. So, what if they base the next GTA around doing like a Midnight Club? Like, mm-hmm. I think both. Mm-hmm. You know? Like crossing it over. Yeah, like making the car customization more. Like, making the whole storyline being about, like... Driving. Driving. Uh-huh. And just be, being, like, be really thug, cool. thugging with it, you know? Yeah. Like, being able to, like, rob a liquor store if you want, but also, like... You have to get to your next race. Yeah. That'd be really cool. It'd be, it'd be different than, like, the gangster motif. Do you call it yeah. GTA... Is, this is like, a GTA one, though, right? Yeah, GTA this is, this, like, G, GTA 6. It'd be cool. Just, like... Or you go non-numbered, and you give them a GTA Grand Theft Auto... But that would be a side game. Yeah. True. They could do like a Ballad of Gay Tony thing, though. The DLC like, well, something like that. Standalone like, DLC. Like, <laughs> stories. And... I was going to say, <coughs> the funny thing is, uh, besides like the uh, uh, the Triad Wars, was that a mobile game? or like PS- There's one real bad one. But besides that, honestly, I don't think... I was going to defend it, but I think it's just me personally, I don't look down on the side stories. And not just the standalone DLCs. Those are like... Those are no one's shitting on those necessarily, but uh, I you know I have a soft spot for Liberty City Stories, <laughs> which is the very side game. It's just like, do you want just more of just this? My, yes, <laughs> I do love three. Yes, yes please. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that would be that would be interesting. Uh, a Midnight Club return would be good. Where would you want? Let's say it's either of those situations, whether it's a a Midnight Club uh, branded like that. Or Brandon's Midnight Club. Where would you want it to be? The whole world? Do you want a city? Do you want a location uh, specifically? Because no, Midnight crew. Club... Midnight Club does specific... There's like a London one, right? There's like one where it's like, this is the London Midnight Club. Am I, I wrong? Remember. I just remember Double Dutch being a fire. Was there like a I remember city LA. Like? I remember uh-huh. Midnight Club LA. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like yeah. that one. Like at least the titles made me think this. Yeah. Where would you want to see? A new Midnight Club. London would actually be really cool. Yeah, if they haven't already done London, that would be that'd be pretty, pretty sweet. But you know, Forza, it's Forza's taken off. But you know, the customization is just not the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's today's date. Sem- second. September. Second. September second. September second. So tomorrow. Pay your 2018. Rent. Pay your rent tomorrow. Well, fuck you, and. Yeah. <laughs> is that really what it was? No. I, uh... What is it? It's a holiday tomorrow. Nope. Well, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. It's his singing. Super Street the Game comes out tomorrow. Nice. The third? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yes. Eat. Eat day one, baby. Do we know the price? And day one, baby? Probably the price of a new game, man. Any yeah, day one, I'm gonna get that in the morning. You think it's sixty? I hope not, but it might be forty. You think? The Oni Musha remaster is twenty, right off rip. Pretty excited about it. Not gonna lie. Seventy nine dollars with the season pass. Ooh. Also, beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> beggars can't be choosers, but I really wish they had done the first Oni Musha. They did like I think it's like the three D one. I definitely didn't play Warlords, but I think it's more like God of War style camera, Don't Make Cry. Yeah, man, Super Street's coming out. You'll play it. You'll give us a review of it. Maybe. You've quieted up on Street. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, this is getting awkward, Cal. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I'm thinking about the next car shows. Oh, man. Terrible. Coil over. You got the itch. <laughs> I got the itch. There's two coming up, and I have signed up for next week's VIP. Nice. And 
There's also a huge one, October 6th, mark your calendars. Mark your calendars. No, you guys probably can't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't own a camera. Um, <laughs> Actually, so, you know what TC stands for? The Cam- Toyota Camry. I found the, the actual meaning of what it stands for. Toyota Camry. Touring Coupe. Happy <laughs> But the I was I joined like a TC thing on Facebook and said, see what you what you uh what do you think T C stands for? I did put Toyota Camry. That's funny. A lot of people put Toyota Corolla. Some people put Tiny Corolla. Adam Corolla. Some people <laughs> two some people put two door Corolla or two door Camry. So what I'm thinking is a new rampage game. Oh. But it's only online Battle Royale, Kaiju Battle Royale. <laughs> what the Dude. fuck? Dude. Or, uh, you right. So, anything like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're supposed to destroy the city. There's, an, there's a Neo. They keep putting all the Neo Geo games up on PS4. <laughs> <laughs> like, the main game is to destroy the city. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here with him, because it doesn't have to be that. We could, As long as we're getting something like this. Of all the Neo Geo games, the arcade game ports that they. Put on the PS4. The only one I I don't care about King of Fighters, but I do care about King of the Monsters, and I almost buy it all the time. It's like seven dollars. Yeah, man, fictional monsters. Uh, Ralph sorry, the like Rat owned was my <laughs> original monsters, owned existing IP monsters. Kaiju Battle Royale. What are you looking at? Kaiju, Kaiju Battle Royale. Battle Royale. Yeah, man, for sure. Or like the the FIFA Battle Royale, you know? One ball, 100 soccer players. <laughs> Boy, one goal. Funny. No, no, no FIFA Battle Royale. <laughs> Don't you separate from this great kaiju idea. Mario Tennis who, Battle Royale. Who do, you, who do you want to see in it? Um, <laughs> it depends. It depends if you're going for uh, if you're going for Rampage or are you going for King of Monsters? Because I'm good with either. You've opened the door. King of Monsters is just like. Monster uh, Hunter. I would like the Monster Hunter would be nuts. Monster Hunter. You get to play as the monsters in Monster Hunter. It'd be funny if half the people cool. on the maps were monsters and the other half oh, were the hunters. Oh, that'd be sick. Gears of War Battle Royale. But like the, the people are locusts. The monsters are literally soldiers. have like double strength or like triple strength or something like that. I want Gamera in it. Gamera is the Godzilla of turtles. I want to play as Mothra. I do love Gamera. I have a special place in my heart for Gamera. Gamera's so good. I want to kill a giant dick. Rides like a UFO. Can we talk about, for a second, I know we've gone off the rails a little bit. Uh, Leisure the- Suit Larry Battle no. Royale. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen the new Godzilla trailer? The Godzilla one, trailer. One Man, 100 Bitches. Is it, a, is it a movie or is it the new Netflix series, Godzilla? There's a new Netflix series? I don't know if it's a series, but it's a new Netflix movie. Or it's my either a movie or a series, but it's a Godzilla. Girl from like uh, Girl from Stranger Things. I right? don't know. So there's a new there's Godzilla movie. Godzilla and, thing and, on Netflix. And H A L. Yeah, H A L. H A L. No, so did you see it, Kirk? No, I. Oh wow, this is not a discussion. Then I'm worried. N H A L. I I at the beginning of the thing, I'm like, new Godzilla doesn't matter. I'm gonna watch it. I have a soft spot for. Why is there so many fucking Godzilla movies? Bad Godzilla. I have so I have a soft spot for bad Godzillas. Even the last one was fine. Uh, and the first one. And then I'm like, ooh, this looks really interesting. And then I was hard out. Partway through, I'm just like, they've lost me. They've like started calling them Titans, which is a cool idea. But there's just like Titans. we ha- we haven't called these monsters Titans for so long that it feels really weird to be like, the Titans have always been here. Like shh. Like, mm-hmm. No, the, no, the kaiju's have always been here. What's this hidden prophecy that like I like calling them titans, but like it's seriously too late or something for me? I don't know what it is. Uh, and then it's, th- it's like a forty-year-old franchise. And then, at the end of the trailer, <laughs> and at the end of the trailer, I was hard back in because I'm like, this looks so ridiculous. I kind of don't know what's happened. It was Mothra's uh, Mothra's shadow. We just saw it like the shadow over the ground. I'm like, I'm interested. Dude, in, it's like, just gonna I'm be gonna like a reboot it. of the Mothra movie with like. Um, it's what's King, it called? It's King of Monsters. King, King Gamora. Or... Oh, I do think we're going to see King Gamora. Is that what it is? <laughs> I think so, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just waiting because, like, they came, out, they came out with the Kong movie, and they came out with the Godzilla movie, and I'm like, they're prepping each other for, like, the interaction, so I'm waiting for that movie, but, like... Hey! Hey, what's up, dude? I rented... 
What a wonderful kind of day. We learn to laugh and pray. Wait. Pray. It gets along with pray. each pray. other. All right. Did you get to listen I, uh, to the beat? Listen to the beat. Listen to the rhythm. I rented uh, Ready Player One. Watched it with Mariah. She thought it was fucking dope. Really? Yeah. Every time. <laughs> That's a surprise. Ever, I don't know why. <laughs> ever oh since. She was so excited about the Iron Giant. Godzilla Dude. is in that movie, too. Um, Iron Giant is a real, a real yeah, good one. Spoilers. It's okay. I, I've, that's consistently what I've heard about it. Though, expect, like, expect, oh, expect many I'm, others. I'm probably not going to watch that movie. <laughs> the movie's fine. You should I, watch I it. I heard it's good. Um, but ever since we started watching it, she's like been playing video games. She's, like, back, she's back in the Life of Strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, as, she's as in like soon, Strange Heart? Yeah. As soon as, as soon as you got done watching that movie. You go through phases. Just playing them, dude. My my first VR, th- one of the first thing, VR things I ever did. Roger sat me down with some stuff. He's like, "I'm gonna show you a bunch of weird stuff I have. Like a lot of it's free." I'm like, "Cool." One of the first things is like, uh, people who know more about us than VR definitely know. I'm like, we're gonna know exactly what I'm saying. I'm just describe it as best I can. You're in a forest at night, a beautiful forest. Uh, you, you see like the dew drops on the leaves and everything, and it's like nothing's really happening, and you can't move. You're just watching this happen, and then like. You see, like, some planes go over, and then you see, like, this screw just roll by, and it starts blinking. I'm like, the fuck? And I do think part of me, for a second, thought Iron Giant, like, I'd seen Iron Giant in, like, the 365 days before <laughs> sometime. And I think for a second I thought Iron Giant, and I'm like, well, it's definitely not that, you know. Uh, and then big-ass Iron Giant comes, walking up, and grabs that screw, and looks at you, and puts you in his hand, I'm like, and then it's over, that's the whole experience, I'm like, what? <laughs> this Iron Giant VR just blew my shit, and you don't do anything in this game. <laughs> you just, you feel like, what is this? It's Iron Giant, he sees you, he picks you up in your hand, and you, like, are face-to-face with Iron Giant, who's fucking huge, and, uh... That's the beginning of, like, that's one of the first things where I'm like, man, VR is so special. <laughs> Another thing we watched, that prank show, or that guy doing all the yeah, guy magic doing, tricks, doing magic he let tricks. people put on the VR. Interesting. And, like, said that they were going to feel like this floating sensation. And uh-huh. made them float in the air. And he made them, like, float in the air while they were doing the VR. It was crazy. Whoa. I still want to figure out how you make people levitate, man. You pay him money. I'm a suspect to a lot of the things that he's that he was like doing inside of that show. Yeah, it was yeah. You want to go hard hardcore magician cynic right now, dude? You you, like, you, pay, you pay him beforehand. You place the camera really well. You fucking. No, this, you this, don't is like a, this is like a Netflix Dude, show. This like, is a Netflix show. It was like some of it was insane. Like mm-hmm. I actually don't know what show you're talking about. I'm, I don't want to shit on something I don't even know. Tell I actually this. I would like to watch this show with you. Tell so me about be it. Like, what the it's, fuck? It's I do love it's street magic. Is I can't. Street magic? Yes, but like I can't even like tell you. Like it's one of the most amazing magic I've ever seen. What's it called? Whoa! Oh wait, <laughs> uh, what is it? Um, magic for humans. Magic for humans. Or That's magic for people. Magic cool. for humans. Cool. Yes. Netflix took it out. Yes, nice. He fucked up. Like he pulled like Just some guy, right? Like yeah, like he he. The there's shit. one yeah. one that I was really most amazed at is like he poses like a flower man, like selling flowers on a truck, mm-hmm. and then he and he told them that there he was actually like working for this company that was like uh, against the NSA or the FBI that like put chips inside of people. When, when they, they like, get, get surgery, like, when they get medical procedures and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So he goes and then, like, he gets this, like, little light bulb that's not attached to anything. Uh-huh. It's like two wires and he rubs it on their skin. Like, they, he invites them into the van, right? Uh-huh. And then he puts these two wires and rubs it down their arm and stuff like that, like, where they have surgery and stuff. And it will randomly, like, blink. And then he goes and he convinces them that, you know, there's a chip in your arm. That they put in here when you got your surgery done. That's so crazy. And he puts this yeah, like puts this, thing like, on, their on their thing, right? the thing mm-hmm. and he starts pumping, and it pulls a chip out of their fucking arm. 
<laughs> you see it come through their fucking skin, dude. Like, oh, so like it forms like a big bubble. Like uh-huh. it sucks it, you know? And then yeah, it just yeah. like sucks this thing right out of their skin. It's like, good shit. What is this? What the fuck? It's another one where it's like magic for Susan's. But you know, just... a lot of people didn't freak the fuck out. Like, if that was me, I would have freaked the fuck out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's why I think that, like, that one was. I mean, a lot of it was set up because, like, dude, can you imagine some guy inviting you into a van telling you that last time he had surgery, they put some chips in your arm and then says he has a, a thing to take the chip out? He's not really, charging you any money. He's really rolling the dice on people having had one surgery in their life, at least. You know? And, like... Because I have not had one surgery in my life. Weird. Yeah. I'd be like, ha-ha. <laughs> also happen to all be in, like, places where you can get to really easily. Uh-huh. I think nobody had, like, fucking back surgery. You know what I mean? Right. I noticed that. He was like, oh, surgery. my arm, or something like that, you know? Like... It was a... He had a bit called Magic for Susan... And what he would do is he would find a woman named Susan and do a card trick for her. Mm-hmm. That sounds yeah, so it's really funny. Magic for Susan. <laughs> he just has to find a Susan. I love that like, idea. What's her name? She's like, my name's Susan. He's like, magic for Susan. There's one where like this girl's dog <laughs> was named Susan. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. But he would, there's like these other ones where he would ask. Uh, he goes, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a trick for you. And then I'm gonna ask you, and a then I'll ask you a really fucking weird question or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fucked up. I like the idea of walking into like a yoga class and being like, uh, he did, oh do, a, he did do a yoga one too. Did he? Yeah. yeah. For Susan? No, not, oh. not for Susan. Because I'm like, it's hard to find if if you were, if, let's say, this man is really doing street magic pranks, like full, fully real. Uh, in that point, in that case, it's like, how do I find these Susans? I'm like. You dress up like a, a delivery guy with flowers, like a flower delivery guy, which you literally just gave, you said he was a flower yeah. delivery guy, but you walk into, or something, you walk into a yoga studio and be like, I'm looking for Susan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there might be a Susan in there. There was some that was fucked up, like he, he gave this guy a card, mm-hmm. and he ripped it, mm-hmm. and then he put it in his mouth, like the part of the card, and then he drank half a thing of Elmer's glue. Oh dang no! And then he took the card, like the guy still had it in his hand, and he did like this, and he like when he was done like that, the card was back to whole again. Wow, good shit. So you want to see that remastered for what PS4 or yes Xbox One? There should be a Magic video game, <laughs> dude. Let's talk about that. Do you Mag- think they're Magic the Gathering? No, Magic Magic. Cartier, will you do me one favor right now? I don't like to ask you that many things. I don't want to ask you for a favor, but will we can we check right now on Google? Is there a David Copperfield? Because he's the only one big enough. Unless who's the video other guy? Video game. Video game. Who's David the other guy? Blaine. Or a David Blaine video game, or a Chris Angel video Chris game. Angel. There might be a Chris Angel video game. Let's get to the bottom of this right now, um, because interesting. Has there really been a magic video game? Magic video game. Uh, because I think that most likely we'll probably say it's Chris. You guys ever been to a big magic show? No, dude. We should do it one day. <laughs> yeah. Why the fuck not? That I don't have a good, got a lot. I don't have a lot of good reasons not to. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't have any reason to turn down a magic show, really, yeah. except for obviously the devil. Fuck him. Good point. No. No, no, David magic video, no magic video. No David video Blaine. Games. No David Blaine. No Chris Angel. No about the look of Copperfield. What's Copperfield's? Was it David Copperfield? David Blaine and David Copperfield. Someone walking by my window. Let's scared the shit out of me, yeah, dog. Yeah. We yeah. can't be talking about magic. It wasn't Noctis. People fucking. Kyle walked away. Interesting that there's been no magic video game before. I mean, it's probably a hard thing to do. Obviously, there's a lot of magic in games. They can't get the physics right. Street magic. Yeah. No, you just can't, can't, can't reveal your tricks. That sounds like a series of quick time events that are difficult. How do you let where you sleight of hand? How does levitating work? Does no, do you, none, of you, none of you guys have a clue. Uh, I think that you just focus. How do you levitate other people? Uh, Adderall. 
That's so funny. <laughs> this is such a stupid joke, but what is funny about it is there isn't a single Magic game, dude. I'm really surprised there isn't a shitty SNES one. That's immediately what I went to. That's why I said Copperfield. Because mm. I'm like... What game I want to see remastered? What? Quidditch. Harry Potter Quidditch? Harry Potter I've, Quidditch. I've played that in the last few months. I can tell you it's pretty good. <laughs> Expand on that? Or even just like a... hit. What if you got a Harry Potter to story mode game? Harry Potter Quidditch Battle Royale. <laughs> <laughs> One snitch. <laughs> One snitch. Such a bullshit game. Okay, so why Harry Potter Quidditch is broken is because of this. Because uh, all that matters is how much you pass depends on... Like, the more you pass, the easier it is to score a goal or more more speed you get when you're catching the snitch at the end. I think that... I'll tell you this, talking to Olivia, I was under the understanding that sometimes there were games where they didn't catch the snitch. That's what I thought. I was like, some games end 5-4. to four. You know what I mean? No, man. The, Harry Potter fans are fucking like screaming right now. They're like, That's how the, the game only ends. There's no time limit. It ends when the, the snitch is caught. Uh, I think that's bullshit. I think that's not a game. <laughs> it's right. also broken by the actual rules of the game. I like, the snitch. One. Yeah, yeah. How about a trilogy battle royale? Wow. Yeah. Star Wars versus <laughs> Lord of the Rings <laughs> versus Most expensive. Harry Potter <laughs> versus <laughs> What else is there? Before you we say another Thrones. Thrones. Before we say another bullshit battle royale, let me throw this out there, Kyle. I really do want another category. Your fighting game. I really want another yeah. Kat- Katamari Battle Royale. I really want a, a, a <laughs> so so one hundred items, a hundred balls. Katamari is a game where you roll things up in a ball. Uh, we pe- collect the entire world. Coins, people, eventually houses, eventually solar systems, planets. Sometimes, but you start small. You start as small as a mouse sometimes. Uh, but we haven't had a game for that. The only one for this gen is Katamari Forever, which is a PS3 game, but it is on PlayStation now, so, you know, it's there. There is no Katamari game for this for this gen, and it's, I'm not saying there has to be, but I can tell you that Keita Takahashi is not making Katamari game, he's making something called Wadam. Yeah, I was going to say Wadam. Which Ew. was dropped by PlayStation, then picked up by Annapurna, Sounds gross. who is more known for video, more known for movies than, than video games, but... All the video games it's been doing has been increasing, like, really artsy, like Outer Limits, the banjo strumming robot, and Goragoa, which is like puzzle game of the year from last year, and dropped right at the end of the year and stole that shit. If Goragoa got puzzle game of the year for people last year, which it did for many, it fucking stole it in December. Like fucking other things didn't. Uh, yeah. Annapurna got behind it. I'm scared because I haven't heard anything about Wadam, man. I and I Wadam check. All up. I check. And at like Gamescom, Wadam's as playable as it ever was. I'm kind of wondering if they like. It's just not ready. Like I thought they may be reworking it, but if they keep bringing it, people keep seeing Wadam for the first time. I feel like they've been bringing it to conventions for like two years, and I'm just waiting for Wadam to come out, man. Uh, it's a game about friendship and hand holding and. Making things explode and turning people into poop. Like, it's a simple little game. Is that a new cyber game called? Cyberpunk. Got yeah. gameplay this week, 50 minutes of it. We saw what people saw behind closed doors at E3 and Gamescom. I only God, didn't. How do you guys feel about it? I only didn't bring it up this week because I kind of want to do a hardcore gameplay thing next week. I haven't seen all of Cyberpunk yet. I haven't seen any of it. I don't so I'm like, gonna go home. And... Cool. I, I want to do that and oh, Devil May yeah. Cry. They've had big gameplay things, and if anything else comes out this week, if we get like a huge Red Dead thing, that'd be cool. But really, I want to. I might even put them in the background. I might talk over. Like next podcast might be the, the gameplay podcast. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, there's a lot to go over with Cyberpunk. A lot to go over with Devil May Cry. I know I said we'd go over that this week, Devil May Cry, but. <laughs> I, so, I have seen that, but yeah. So another another game that I think I'm it's gonna be another battle royale game. But uh Damn it. So, Son of a bitch. Dude, no, but think of this think of this, alright? <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, Tournament of Power. Hamsters? No. Okay, no okay. Okay. I'm ready. I got I'm less in. Dragon Ball Super, Tournament of Power. Uh-huh. Pretty okay. much there was eight universes. 80 people in one ring, it was a battle royale. 
Cool. Why not just make that a video game? I think we should make a Dragon Ball Z baseball game. And multiple people. They play baseball in Super. Dude, I'm down with it. Uh, they have a baseball episode? With the... Yeah. That way it's like more than one person can be Goku, but you have to like... Once like this No, one. it's like there are like 80 people. Mm-hmm. Like there Is are there 80... There, Goku? there are 80... No, there are 80 playable characters inside of the Tournament of Power. Like there are 80 unique characters that they made... So there's not... Oh, okay. You randomly get chosen to be this character. You don't oh, get the big character. Pick, oh, damn. No Upa then. No Upa DLC. No. How about... Now, hear me out, Cartier. Dragon Ball, Tournament of Power, Cross... Hamtaro. Hamtaro? Hamtaro. There's a lot of playable characters. We're getting like an extra 15 characters, all hamsters. Hamtaro the band. How do you feel about that cross? Well... I don't want to get in the power scaling or anything, but... <laughs> good point, good point. Hamtaro in Jump Force? Pantera. Can make that happen? They, prob- they probably can make it happen. Bon Jovi? Bon Jovi in Jump Force? Oh, shit. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> oh, when's the Def Jam game come out? No, dude, that's not even officially announced. Yeah, oh, yeah. Man. Everyone's just excited because it's like, hey, guys, if there was a new Def Jam, who would you want to be in it? Bon Jovi. I'm like, I'm like don't you say that, Def Jam. Bon Jovi, man. Bon Jovi. Me, oh yeah, the, the, so we talked about that on a podcast, but it was me, D'Angelo, and Gabe, and some highlights of that conversation I'll say is, uh, Just it's easy right. for me to not know this, you guys might know this, but the Def Jam label is actually huge, uh, and a lot of people fall under it that we might not realize, such as the Justin Biebs. Bieber, yeah. The Biebs, but more than that. Also, maybe we came to this conclusion Lil B not being signed by anyone might make it easier to get Lil B the bass god into Def Jam. Who's that? Uh, you know Migos? Yeah. Not them. Not Migos. Also, Migos fighting all as one. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse it, their it's a good head. idea. <laughs> it's pretty funny, like when they come in, you know, like. You know, like when you do a move in Mortal Kombat and they just like pop into the screen. And pop yeah, yeah, yeah. Punch, it, punch. Kick. It'll be the it'll be their ad libs, like yeah. Mama. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so good. I brought up the fact that maybe you have like eight fighting styles in the game, but you do have one guy who's like not any of those eight fighting styles. But you can't like <laughs> it's just like its own style. And that's Lil Wayne, and all of his offense is skateboard based. It's all skateboard based. And his is falling and just like the board hitting you in the face. Yeah. And you can make your own person and customize it, but there's really not a lot of like name brand logos you can use. But like there's like eight different truck fit logos you can use. And you're like, oh my god, use truck when fit. I was in France, <laughs> I've seen this really old, tall Asian guy. Wearing a fitted truck fit hat. Like, <laughs> like bill to the side. Dang. Like, what up? Like, Little Louisiana. Dude, like, like a wrinkly Asian. Tall yeah. and old. Dude. Like, I was like, what's you think, up? You think he's skateboarding? You said he was tall and skinny. I don't know. Yeah, but like, truck fit is recent, though. Yeah, no, I mean, like, you think he skates now? Oh, <laughs> right man, now? I don't know. I don't think so. You think he's three flipping down the, the six stair? No. <laughs> but I was like... My nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of uh, Wheezy's taunt in the Def Jam game. This is going to be him taking out his phone and pouring some champagne out of it. Oh. <laughs> you pop champagne. Have you seen that commercial? Uh, no, I was just told about it. It's great. Yeah. In VR. No, I don't know. Ooh, ow! Uh, I'm going to steal, man. I have, yeah. I have another thing I want, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, I have some other things that I would enjoy. Is it a Lion King game? Uh, a new Lion King game. Now, hear me out on this, guys. They never made a Lion King one and a half in the style of Lion King SNES. All right, stop joking. You mean the new Home Lava Improvement Claw. game, right? Dude. Lava Claw? Home new Improvement. Home Improvement. Coil over. New Home Improvement game would be fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> a plum got threw off. I think that here's a real thing I want. This is a game not brought back necessarily. I, it will say brought back. There's a series of PS2 games that didn't come to America. People call it some of the best wrestling games of all time. Professional wrestling is what I'm talking for a second. King of Coliseum. I think that right now Japanese wrestling has never been bigger in America. As someone who's loved Japanese wrestling for a long time, I can tell you most people don't give a fuck. Right now, like. 
you walk around it and you'll see a Bullet Club shirt. And it's like, what the fuck's Bullet Club? And it's like, probably the biggest thing since the NWO. With the thing with the NWO is it was on a cable television show. It was on a cable TV in the States. Like, NWO was huge. Hulk Hogan was part of the NWO. You know it. There's no real Hulk Hogan for the for the Bullet Club. NWO? And New World Order. The NWO. It's a thing from the late 90s. Pretty much when WWF was killing it with Stone Cold and The Rock. WCW had NWO. I'm not trying to get into this. I'm sorry, guys. New Japan Pro Wrestling, specifically, just signed something with Fire Pro Wrestling, which is a... A game that comes out and has come up for a long period of time. Well, the story is it doesn't have the graphics of like the 2K games WWE is putting out. What I want is a New Japan pro wrestling game. That's the end of that. In the style of King Coliseum, in the style of something like that, Virtual Pro. I want a bullfighting game. A bullfighting game? Yeah. How about a Red Bull X Games? Super street, yes. Beer chugging game where you only play. We only chug beer through your ass. And then play ping pong. Here's the thing about ping pong. <laughs> Curtier, we got a lot from Kyle. Anything that you would love to see come back, or just come to the Switch, uh, that isn't a battle royale. Foosball. Um, virtual reality foosball. <laughs> you just play fucking foosball. <laughs> I would like Spyro for the Switch. That mm-hmm. would be nice. Unannounced. Still not on the Switch yet, as far as we know as people. I would like to see a... I'd like to see a re... Um, a redo of Tomba. If anyone played Tomba, Tomba, I am oh, green, very green pants, pink hair. Very Is that barely. a trumpet game? Nope. Nah, it's he's a like a little like wild boy, and these like mystic pigs are taking over the land. It's like the better Super Adventure Island. All right. I had a demo CD mm-hmm. for PlayStation. Mm-hmm. Added on it. Number talk. And the power of Juju. Yeah. Talk. Is he a jungle boy? I barely remember it. They had TV series on Netflix. Whoa. Yeah. And on Netflix, uh, Nickelodeon. How do you say Netflix? How do you feel about... This is something we bring up a lot, but... How do you feel about a new Pokemon Snap for the Switch? We already talked about yeah, this. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, we've talked about it, but I don't know how deep we've gone into it. And I, specifically... I feel like it should be incorporated in Pokemon Go. Yeah, it should, it should be on the phone because the Switch doesn't have any cameras. That way you can just see the Pokemon in the world. Right, And True. you can't capture it, but you can take a picture of it. Like, mm. there's some you can't capture it, there's some you can only take pictures of. No. I know there was, like, a camera you could put on the N64, but... Like, that's not how I played it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I still think a, a Pokemon Step, a new Pokemon Step might work. Yeah, maybe it's, that's a better mobile game idea. I hate those words that just came out of my mouth, that maybe that's a better mobile game idea. I wish you could. Because that's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> What I want is fucking 50 places. I want 50 on-rail shooters where I'm just taking pictures of Pokemon, throwing balls. Give me too much content for that. 900 Pokemon? Give me 900 Pokemon. It'd be cool if you could turn Pokemon Go into like a Beyblade Stadium almost. So there's like Pokemon Stadium for the phone. He's random. He's like a circle full of people. Because motherfuckers are just paddling in the middle of nowhere. I bring up Snap middle because I've, I've given middle up on Stadium. I've given up on Stadium because, like... I've given up on you. Pokin, Pokin's probably a better idea, let's no, face it. You, at this no, idea, no. Pokin's probably just a better idea. Nope, nope. Not for a phone, though. Not, not that for a phone. Not for a phone. We're fucking not talking about the phone. Are we? Mobile oh, games he are valid. Just, he was just talking about uh, Pokin's yeah. favorite phone, though. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, you know, remember the Beyblade Stadiums? Little circle things. and they Carry the Beyblades yeah. around. Beyblade. This one's not so crazy, but a Beyblade on the no, but Animal Crossing. Dreidel Blade. We've got <laughs> <laughs> we've got Animal Crossing on mobile now, and I made it, it out of death. It did well enough. Animal Crossing on Switch. It's got to be a matter of time, right? No. Just like Pikmin. What do we get first, Pikmin or Animal Crossing? Criteria. Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. But they, but they said Pikmin was almost ready four years ago. Yeah, my ass. 
fuck, I feel like a cyberpunk. It was almost ready for, for the Wii U. Like 17 minutes ago. Or 17 Dude, years ago. W- one thing about cyberpunk... Uh, cyberpunk had crazy... The, the gameplay thing, they looked... That was first stream live on Twitch. They had crazy amount of people watching, dude. Like, uh, yeah, because the game looks fucking dope. But two hundred fifty thousand, and it's just like a gameplay reveal, dude. Like that's. So, uh, there are some esports that don't hit those numbers. They're definitely uh, your biggest streamers. A lot of them aren't hitting the, those numbers. Like, yeah, that was pretty crazy. There's just this weird like lore. There's this weird like aura around cyberpunk. Partially it's from Witcher 3, partially it's from that trailer at 7 years old, partially it's from... Terminator 2. When we first get how it was brought at the Xbox conference, how it hacked in, and then you have everyone who's anyone in, in gameplay except us, or in games journalism, it's like, that was at E3, they're like, yeah, we got to see this demo, let me tell you about this demo, like, we saw this demo, why can't the people see the demo... They're like, oh, it's probably for these reasons. And then CD Projekt Red is like... Are we not cool enough to like go to that stuff? CD Projekt, we're not big enough. Ever. One day, maybe. CD Projekt Red's like... Story of my life. That is... We're not Ooh, that is... <laughs> is it because we're not LA-based? We can move to LA. I'm no, to my dick's too small. I kind of want to make snow... Pro- I want to make snow <laughs> promos. Cordier's penis is small. I want to make promos where we have the snow. Too small. But it gets the job done. <laughs> like third, third it's run away. away from this topic right now. Run away from it. All right, so Anything yeah. else? All right. So <laughs> there's some, there, uh, there's some news right here. Okay. All right. Have you heard of Puddlegate? Whoa! Immediately, it sounds like something we shouldn't talk about. It's got a gate for real it. though. All right, so, sorry, yeah, dude. it's like all right. So a lot of people are giving the new Spider-Man game shit. Oh, okay. Oh. Because. uh they have this, uh, pass this to Kyle as well. Look at this. So it's got an image. The top image of it is what they showed at E3. This is a big deal. Yes. The bottom image is what you're getting when you play, like, when you actually play the game. On PS4 uh, or on Pro, I wonder? I don't know. On Xbox One? It's I don't know. I haven't looked much up, like, much into it, but, like, that's the thing that's going on right now. Probably. Oh, man. As that, far as the top... That saddens me. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, because this is conveniently right before it comes out, too, I wonder. It, I, uh, which people have review copies, but also slander. I borderline, the water's not even the same. I borderline hope it's like that, because, like, I'm gonna rub it in Trey's face, because <laughs> he's like, this game is gonna look fucking amazing, and I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, these cutscenes look great. Yeah, remember when you bought a <laughs> PS4 Pro, you asshole? So, here's what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> looking at that... The thing about Spider-Man looking one way to the other, that's something to talk about for yeah. sure. I wonder if, uh, and if it was just that, being like, well, I wonder if he looks like this on the Pro. You should send that to Trey in a text message. Uh, just see what he fucking does. I'm going to do it right now. But also, past that, yeah, people really focused on those puddles, dude. Like, seriously. Like, it's so funny, like, the puddle gate thing. is like, people are up in arms, like... People really focused on those puddles after that's it looked really good. Yeah, you could see the character models reflecting in the puddles yeah. was fucking better than other character models in current games. Yes. Like it looked really good. Um, did you text it to him? Yeah, I did hopefully text we'll get it to a him. hot response. Hopefully, um, that'd be nice. Hopefully, I, he's like, yeah, well, uh, it, blah, 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 I bet he blah, says blah, it won't blah. look like that on the pro, which kind of is where I stand. I wonder exactly out of context. I wonder what that looked like from. I, I, yeah. gonna look like I think it's a lot of a lot of people feel like they're being lied to about this game because what? like the hype was like this game looks fucking amazing it's seamless transition between blah 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 and they're just like mm-hmm. stroking off this fucking game like hardcore Which still might be great I will say the less it's puddles pro- thing, dude it's probably gonna be great but I mean yeah. overhype the less it puddles exists. thing reminds Which me is of why, the, yeah you, it might ruin it little puddles the little the less puddles reminds me of the Ubisoft thing which I know they're like oh don't blow that out of fucking Whatever. I'm like, no, man. The the first Watch Dogs ga- gameplay demo from Ubisoft that got everyone oh, so hyped. God. Do you remember it? Where he makes the car crash yeah. happen? Specifically the car crash. Like, I didn't play Watch Dogs, and when it was brought to my attention side by side, uh, not even side by side, if you had just shown me the Ubisoft thing, there's like four cars in it. There's like three cars that crash in the actual part of the game where that happens. And yes, they were giving you a vertical slice of that game. And yes, maybe... No, there's not a lot of good excuses for it, dude. Like, oh man, like it's just like you gotta, you have to realize that 
It's very deceptive to show me causing a 20 car pile up and then have it be four cars and like just taking out taking out of the fact that the actual graphic fidelity of Watch Dogs was not as promised like that's classic Ubisoft but the less puddles things immediately makes me think the Watch Dogs well and like the uh, suit too yeah you know, oh yeah he looks different for sure uh, yeah, suit looked like. Funny thing is, I'd play either of those games. No, yeah, dude. Like I said, not it's, day like, one. That's why, like, whenever we've talked about it, like, I've never been like, "Wow, this game looked like really good." I don't, like, you know, mm-hmm. like, it, it's I like mean, it has looked good, but it, it does look good. But like, that's not what I was expecting for the gameplay. Like, as many times as like people are like, "This is what the game's gonna look like," I'm like, "No, it's fucking not." Mm-hmm. Does that make you also possibly question uh... the amazing Last of Us footage we saw at E3? Because I will say the combat that that's like a in different that, that's like a different game though that's like a different style of game it's a different studio like if there's anyone not to doubt it's probably Naughty Dog probably like CD Projekt Red yeah. Naughty Dog <laughs> yeah pretty crazy so I found something out by the way this week uh, but it's interesting we're talking about graphics and stuff and we never do that but. Uh, some people had come out and been like, Man of Medan looks good, but why does it not look as good as Until Dawn? Like, and this is later in life. And, uh, yeah, Until Dawn was made on the Decima engine, which you would know from Horizon. You've played Horizon. Think of how good the faces look in Horizon. Amazing. Surprising the best face of your life, which is why it's also being used for Death Stranding. Like, I kind of wonder if Kojima's like the faces. Because uh, he does care yeah, about stuff like real. that. Made every fucking nerd just want that as a girlfriend. So until so until dawn, its faces look amazing, and like man, but Dan looks good. But I think it's around like frostbite or something, man. It's not like even if the facial scanning, it's not the same. It's not Sony exclusive. I don't think they're like we're not going to use a Decima engine. I guess. Uh, very interesting. I'm so hyped on Death Stranding, man. That just that's what that just made me think of. I'm like, as someone who is not a big Metal Gear guy, as someone who's not a big Metal Gear guy. Death Stranding looks like my cup of tea because I, w- I was very in on PT. I was very in on that Silent Hill demo, Guillermo del Toro, yeah. and fucking the Japanese horror guy they had. Uh, which at this point, I think that's one of the few things they lost with this project. Now, forget the name of that guy. It was a Japanese horror director that was also in on the the Silent Hill thing before that went to hell. His name was Tom. His name was Tom Yang. Uh, you know what's sweet about Shenmue, dude? <laughs> Tom Yang. <laughs> what's sweet about Shenmue is that uh, all the martial arts is like, it's like motion captured. You know what I mean? It's like the shit that David Cage is like, I need this. Detroit become human. Uh, but it's like... <laughs> but specifically... What the fuck, This dude? cheap shot of Detroit become human. I just, whenever I see David Cage, it's always mocap suits. And I'm like, this seems unnecessary. <laughs> and Shenmue is probably also unnecessary, but it's like... It's sick. The martial arts in Shenmue is sick. What what people don't sell you on with Shenmue is that it's like, this is a fucking kung fu game. Do you like kung fu movies? You're gonna like this fucking kung fu game then. Uh, but maybe you don't sell it like that because it's like, oh, it's actiony then. It's like, well, at times, not super actiony. It's like, it's like if you really knew a martial art and really were trained at it, how fucking little you would. If a guy, if a drunk guy tried to fight you on the street. You might not beat the fucking shit out of him. You might do two moves that fucking, like, disable him and then walk away from that situation before you get in trouble because you are a trained fighter. Uh, Shenmue's beautiful, man. This week in gaming? I just went back in time for that. Uh, (laughs) So, (laughs) tomorrow's Labor Day. Labor Day is tomorrow. Is Is it open tomorrow? Is it Labor Day or is it Memorial Day? I don't know. No, dude, it's Labor Day. It's Labor Day? Memorial Day weekend, beginning of the summer, Labor Day. Nice, I can start wearing white. Yeah, so, baby. Is GameStop still open tomorrow? Why? What are you going to tell me? Fuck, are they going to drop a video game on a day where it's not fucking open? Because, uh. I don't know, Kyle. In the UK. Listen, will, will Super Walmart st- Super Street. Stock it at midnight. <laughs> Super Street is without a doubt a big, enough, a big enough game that people will be lined up. They probably are going to do the extra thing that GameStop does when enough people care about it. Labor Day. I'm kidding. Super Street's probably not that big. You're lucky if there's a physical copy anywhere in this state. (laughs) (laughs) You're buying that digitally, bud. Oh, man. Hope you got room. Better better go on Amazon right now. No, but I wonder if Super Street gets physical release. That's a really interesting question. 
They're a fucking physical magazine. I mean, I'm, right. They're not right. a purely digital magazine. That I mean, we're going to worse, yeah. I, I think you should be able to buy it on the uh, system, right? Yeah. It, it, it's definitely going to be on the, the actual fucking store. You know. Um, you going to tell me about Super Street next week? Yeah. You don't gotta. Let's have it. It's time for lunch. It's time for lunch. It's 10.47 so oh, at night. I thought that said 12.47. Oh, your, it drops at midnight then, right? I don't know. Tomorrow's the third. That's, uh, we're at midnight then, right? Like, California gets it early, but we get it straight at midnight. I think so. I think they get it at 8. It's fucked up, dude. Yeah, go get it. Yeah. Go, go on, get it. Go on. Go uh, on, get it. Cal, before we close up today's podcast, uh... I have, touch it. I have a question for you. Can I smell that? You have any far? You have any Far Cry suggestions? You clearly don't remember the game. I thought you were gonna say some about farts, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, Do you have I any? I got you, bro. <laughs> I asked. I asked D'Angelo. <laughs> I asked D'Angelo for any tips. Um, don't stay in one spot too long right. when you get discovered. Oh, because it's just. It's gonna oh, keep... they will just keep coming. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Like. Have an exit strategy if you're going to start reading on something. Nice. Yeah. I like that. The other advice I was given was uh, once you find a prepper stash, Dan, try and get in that bitch. Don't walk away from it because prepper yeah. stuff has really good shit in it and it's got ability points in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I would say I am. I've made a lot of headway. I'm guessing I'm like 18% through that game. Yeah. I got a lot done, but not that much. Help. I can play it with you. You can't play it because I have your copy. Well, I mean, I can put, come play it with you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just know you can co-op it, too. I thought that's what you were talking about for a second. Uh, Did you dive into Far Cry Arcade at all? No. Man, no. that looks interesting. There's, like, a creator thing where they give you all these assets. Yeah, it looks... Weird. Yeah, it makes, gets me hyped on dreams. I'm excited for dreams to come out. I remember what the thing that... The other thing that Nintendo took down... Oh, tell me, please. So, Nintendo's been on this uh, rampage right now of taking down, like, the emulator sites. They took down um, all the packs for, um, what is it, RPG Maker. Everything that has the Pokemon assets in it. They took, oh. they took those down. Whoa. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know much about, like, the official RPG Maker. I get, I would have thought that was brought to you by Nintendo if there was... But I guess well, people see, are like, modding. RPG Maker, yeah, exactly. It's like... A mod it's, mod, it's mods. Wow. Wow, they went after that. Yeah. That's big. Yeah, they took all the, like, assets, because those, like, the assets they had for RPG Maker were, like, straight from, like, mm -hmm. straight from Pokemon. That's rough, man. Yeah. They took those down. I know, um, I, I, I do think Showdown's going down in, like, a couple months. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's any necessity into bringing, continuing our conversation of bringing stuff back? You know, it sounded like we were wrapping up. Is there any necessity to bring the trading card game to to we're Switch? One, seriously, one of like uh, one of the most beloved. People don't speak ill of the trading card game of the Pokemon trading card game. Yeah, I'm not saying a new one in the series. You could even just I know they brought it to 3DS recently. Well, so that was the first game that was just um, it came out like '96 or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there's a necessity for it to come out with. You don't think you don't think we need it? Yeah. They brought it back to 3DS. So that's probably good enough. But that's just like the the Game Boy game. That's mm -hmm. not like a new like 3DS game. Right. Oh yeah, no. It's just like the, fir I, I'm the fine first with that. like set. I'm fine with that. <laughs> but it'd be interesting, yes, with the newer cards. You build up things like at this point you have like unestablished like world championships in real life for it. Like you can incorporate that stuff. World championships just happened in Nashville. I showed Kyle a video the other day. And it was, um... Three, uh, 3DS or the, the game? Uh, they have the, the, same the thing. card, the T, they have them all. The same, they, like, poke in the 3DS games and TCG. But I was showing Kyle this video of, um, this kid on live stream during Worlds. Mm -hmm. And he's just, like, he's shuffling his deck, but, like, he's stacking his deck. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Did he get caught or no? No, I didn't get caught because I don't fucking care about cheating. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Anything else good from uh, the World Championships this month? Um, not really, no. You get Pikachu's it. wearing a cowboy hat. Nice. Did you or did you not, I don't know how much you watched of it, but did you catch a glimpse of Heatran? 
Didn't see any hatred. Not a one. Oh, no, nah, he's not that viable. Not in, even, like, not in these generations. Sad. Not even on a poster, eh? Mm. <laughs> but he's still marketable. Da da da. da, da. <laughs> hey. Ho. Hey. Ho. So well, do you guys have anything else for, for me this week? Uh, anything this? else we can put a little discussion on? I think Kyle should keep doing what he's doing. Whoa. Well, <laughs> in that case, I'd like to say thank you for listening to the Great Lakes Gaming Podcast. Nights. Nice. Ooh, think about one sentence. I do. Want, I love it when we all finish with one sentence. Jeez. You like, you like the, Not final, yet. the final words? Yeah, you fucking jump on it, Kyle. Jeez. Fucking every time. I do love final words. You yes. said sentence. I said a fucking word. <laughs> but I can tell you that the Great Lakes Gaming Podcast is brought to you by Lit Mitten Media. You can find the entire backlog of the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher. Spotify, Google Play, assorted other things, assorted other places you'll find podcasts. Uh, and you can also find it on YouTube. What's the name of that YouTube channel? YouTube.com. Lit Mitten Media. Lit Mitten Media. Type in Great Lakes Gaming. I'm sure it won't be too hard to find. As you can find some other content we've made that is not this podcast. And uh, if you're looking, if you love Final Fantasy X, you're like, remember when they serenaded Yuna on the top of Mount Gagazette? You go find that video. It's not hard to find at Litmit Media. Uh, follow us on Twitter. We don't tweet that often, but every now and then Kyle sees a conspiracy yep. <laughs> that has to do with Bernie Sanders and pulling a, a double trigger, and he makes that happen. Most thing I want to hype up is two weeks from today, episode 50. Will not be a hamster clickbait episode. It will be an episode of The Gauntlet. The Gauntlet. The Gauntlet. The Gauntlet. 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 It will be the first five-man gauntlet. When? Uh, September 16th. You already said it. I didn't. I didn't know that date. Two weeks from today. Is <laughs> it, it really? So it's the 50th The fiftieth podcast. Is though. it really the 16th? Yeah, well, it's the second, so it's 14 days. I was, yeah. I was mathing real quick. It's going to be Roger Riott versus D'Angelo versus former gauntlet winner... Nicholas Cartier versus future gauntlet winner E3 predictions champion and never a winner of the gauntlet Kyle Melville yes versus former longest game Melville versus versus former gauntlet winner Dan Allen uh, and it's going to be the gauntlet four we're all going to bring a game. We're all going to do a little trivia. We're going to win this one. Baby. Whoever has the most points at the end will be able to name the fourth gauntlet. And that's after Gauntlet. Gauntlet 2 ain't no looking back. Gauntlet 3, the finite gauntlet. And now Gauntlet 4 will get the subtitle it deserves from the champion we all deserve. That is two weeks from now. But next week you can see a non-hamster related episode. By the way, thank you for staying tuned. Horses, if, though. If you're here just for the hamster that's coming... His name is Al. His horses. name is Algy. And you're going to see him. He's a sweet little boy. But horses. Final words to end the podcast. Who wants to go last? I don't care about it. Cartier's last. All right. My, my final sentence will be... Bang, bang, bang. Pull. My devil trigger. Thanks for listening. My final sentence and or question is... Can I smell that? Kyle, do you ligma? <laughs> ligma. Ligma nuts, roll that outro, bitch! <laughs>